I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is David Morgan, publisher of the Morgan Report. Thank you so much for being here online with me once again. Great to see you. Charlotte, sure, it's always great to see you, and thanks for having me. Yes, of course. So we're here today to talk about a very interesting topic. You recently wrote an open letter to Elon Musk, and I believe it stems from, you know, Tesla started accepting Bitcoin as payment not long ago. In your letter, you asked Elon Musk to consider accepting uh, silver through the load platform. So lots to unpack there, but I think maybe we should start with load and just make sure that we understand what it is and how, how this would work in your view. Okay, great. Well, first of all, you know, for uh, complete disclosure, I am an ambassador for the Load Project. If you want to learn more about it, just go to the URL ag.load.1. So the symbol for silver ag.lode.one, and you can learn more. So having said that, there are, um, I think the big miss so far, this is my opinion, not fact, that the cryptocurrencies that are precious metals backed, and there's more than the Load Project, and I'm well aware of that are kind of sleeping giants in my view, because a lot of the more robust platforms for cryptos have something very tangible behind them that you can see, you know, cobalt or um, some, you know, technology or whatever. Some are just basically, you know, a coin name with, uh, you know, copy and paste the Bitcoin platform make it proof of stake instead of proof of work or whatever. So my point is the blending of the newest technology, what I'll call money in quotes, with the old style money, gold and silver, has yet to reach a, a point of critical mass by a long ways. But I think it will happen. And thinking it'll happen and knowing it'll happen are two different things. So that's the big, big picture. And, you know, Load was just a platform. I'm an ambassador. So, yeah, I was doing a bit of a sales job. But the overall picture is not so much Load, although I think it's one of the better ones or I wouldn't have invested mm -hmm. in it or be a spokesperson for it. Nonetheless, the bigger concept is take precious metals through the blockchain uh, availability or at least consider doing so. That was the big picture. Right. And so now that we know a little bit about that, let's talk about Elon Musk. Has he ever given an indication of his stance on silver or gold? Do you think there's a chance he would read something like that and react favorably? Great question. Uh, the answer is to my personal knowledge, no. I have had like some hearsay evidence, but hearsay evidence is just that. So and so said that such and such said, you know, so I won't go there. It makes sense to me that he may have read it or not, but he's probably heard of it by now. Not that I have any power, but the internet has power. So, you know, he might have just brushed it off. He may have read the whole thing. I really don't know. My purpose was to bring awareness to him and everybody else. And especially if we just, you know, put uh, Elon in a box, which is impossible to do. I mean, talk about, you know, a Renaissance man, a Renaissance thinker, someone that's really changed the world. I mean, all those accolades apply, but to put him in the box of being a commercial user of silver due to what he's doing in the battery power and the solar industry. So I'll put him in the box of being a commercial silver user. And again, he's a lot more than that, but part of what he does, does belong in that box from, you know, common sense. So now he's in a position of needing silver to run his business. And that was, I think the really main thrust of what I said in that article was, hey, mm -hmm. take a look at your longer term business plan and look at where silver fits in. Look at what the quantity is. Look at what your forecasts are. And, you know, take a line of, you know, what are your break even costs and how much silver do you need going five years out? And do you have it now? And if you don't consider, you know, get your staff on it or whatever, what the projections look like. I mean, the United States Geological Survey, I didn't put this in the article, Charlotte, but it bears repeating. I've said it in the past. The USGS has stated silver will be the first element to go off the periodic table. Now, that's an exaggeration. But what they're saying is 
there isn't a lot of silver left in the ground from the way they determine it. And they got a pretty good, you know, methodology. It's not perfect, but what they're saying is of all the elements that we mine, silver is the one that's probably in the shortest supply at current conditions, meaning at a $25 price. Silver goes to $150. Well, that's a different ball game because now mines that were totally uneconomic never could make a dime profit now become profitable so you can mine more silver. So obviously I'm cognizant of the, you know, the bare bones facts, but nonetheless, you know, if I was sitting in Elon's position and I got that letter, I would have somebody run it down and say, you know, is this guy a crank or does he make sense? I want you to do, you know, I want you to do a deep dive. I want you to go into the silver market from the commercial side. What's the inventory look like for silver users? And what are we going to use over the next five years? What are the price projections like? And give me, you know, bring that, you know, that white paper to my desk and we're going to have a meeting, you know, March or what was it? May, May, May 11th, you know, at 11 a.m whatever. So that's it. I mean, I'm belaboring it slightly, Charlotte, but I think it's that important. That's why I did it. It's not just to him, it's to anybody that's not in the club right now that's already part of the Silver Users Association and has a direct relationship with the refiner that gets pretty much what they want on a first dibs basis. New industries like his, not that solar's that new, but he's going to be a big, he'll have a big need and he's not, as I say, in the club that's already kind of, let's say, a direct line. So he's going to have to go in the open market and get it. And that's a little different than going into, let's say, a source that you've already established for the last 30 years or so where you've got first dibs on it. Okay, interesting. So there's there's a group that has access to silver through this, this association that you're mentioning. And there's people like Elon Musk and Tesla who are outside that and may need to go through other sources. So how many people are in that position like Elon Musk and Tesla? How many companies are there that might need to start securing their silver moving forward? Yeah, we don't know. I mean, he would be probably the primary one but, you know, okay. there's probably one a year out that hasn't been developed yet. It might be, you know, the Biden Solar USA company, right? Making a different type of solar panel and they require X amount of silver. And it turns out to be government subsidized or I shouldn't show my bias. It turns out to be one of the biggest solar panel producers two years from now. You know, we don't know. What I will say about the load project is we are working on sourcing silver from multiple sources so that we are kind of you know one of the let's say first in line to get it direct from mines direct from refiners direct from silver streaming companies and last but not least from this uh, e-waste company that i've talked about for so many years that's finally uh, it's been a wait that's finally got on board with uh, recycling printed circuit boards with vast amounts of precious metals tin uh, silver, of course, uh, copper at the front end. So it's a very lucrative and needed business. I mean, why take something like copper or silver or gold or any of those precious elements that take so much energy, time, and effort to get out of the ground and then just throw them away and put it back in the ground? When you have a step where you can take them to a recycling center and extract all that valuable metal and reuse it. So that's one that I'm also trying to procure for the load project. So my goal, along with the companies or the projects, I guess I should say, <clears throat> is to secure multiple streams of silver so that as this precious resource, this precious metal becomes more and more valuable for both industry and monetary purposes, we can source it. And that mm -hmm. again is kind of the gist of the articles like, hey, Elon, yeah. you know, it's a, it could be a sourcing issue. You might want to take a look. Right. And, you know, speaking of sourcing issues, what is the investor demand for silver looking like? I know we saw quite quite some activity toward the beginning of the year. Now we're about three and a half months into the year. Is it still going strong? It is. And I did this last time, but I think it's so important. I need to repeat it. 2020, the de demand for silver investment wise was off the charts. We've never seen anything like the demand we had in 2020. We had over 300 million ounces that was uh, required going into the ETPs, exchange traded products. Most are known as ETFs because most of them are. 
And then the retail side, which is a good year is 100 million ounces, was like a 200 million ounces. So the total silver market's like 800 million ounces mined and another round number rounding up 200 million ounces recycled. So you're looking at over half of the silver market being demanded for investment purposes. That was last year. This year, I don't, we don't know the numbers yet. In fact, the first quarter numbers are just coming in for some of the mines. So we don't know, mm -hmm. but from anecdotal evidence, and I, it's more than hearsay, I would state, is very robust. It's very uh, strong on many places. And one that's kind of overlooked, that's not overlooked by you, but by let's say some people that are not that familiar with the silver market is that a lot of silver has been purchased on a, in a paper form that purportedly can be exchanged for physical silver with you know basically a phone call. So a lot of these accounts that are called unallocated or pool accounts in their statement uh, depends who you look at because each contract is slightly different. But basically, hey, we're holding your metal, but you don't have to pay fees because it's kind of working inventory. Those are my words, but in a lot of cases it is. And uh, you know, if you want it fabricated into uh, a silver product, a retail silver product, you pay the fabrication cost and we'll deliver your metal. And that's fine. You know, I mean, what people you know still don't seem to understand, so a lot do, is when you buy silver, you're buying a commercial bar. Or in a pool account, you're buying an interest in a commercial bar. So if you have 100 ounces of silver, which would be a very nice 100 ounce bar from the Royal Canadian Mint, for example, and you're in a pool account, your brain might tell you, well, I've got a you know, 100 ounce bar coming to me. That's what I've, you know, my account says I've got 100 ounces. Yes, you have one tenth of a thousand ounce bar. And you need to fabricate that bar into one 100 ounce bar, which costs money cost time effort energy has to be you know uh shipped out you know reference put in the book on the books and all that so the point is <clears throat> there is a fabrication cost that's standard in the industry to go a step further and the more important point is that in some cases there's been congestion doing that so it's not as let's say available as most people are led to believe. And I'll leave it at that because I don't want to name names and take you know one data point and make a whole big issue about it. But we are watching it closely, we and many others, on what's really going on in these unallocated and pool accounts as far as people coming into metal they've already purchased, changing the form from uh, you know paper or synthetic into physical and what is that causing in the industry? Yeah, definitely. I've been noticing the rising concerns and commentary on that aspect of the market. I Maybe this is a good time to talk about, so, you know, we have these increasing concerns about unallocated accounts, ETFs, is the silver really there to back them up? Things like that. How is load different? Is it the blockchain element that ensures that you know that the metal behind it is actually where it is should be great question i'll answer the best of my ability i do actually i'll do it publicly think that you might have uh might be a good interview for you to get to let's say the main spokesperson but yeah it's the blockchain and the silver mm -hmm. monetary mass is audited i'll be honest it has not been audited in some time in fact i'll say it's past due but it has been and will be. So it is, you know, it's not a centralized company that owns it. And then, you know, we do, you know, along these lines, it is, uh, you know, a community that uh, are people that participate in the distributed ledger uh, in this, you know, in this program. So the monetary mass is the pool of silver. I will use that word. And that sets the uh, silver in place before you could ever mine a digital AGX coin. So it's like guaranteed that you can't get an AGX coin unless silver is already vaulted. So that's a nice thing. So what happens if you can't vault silver? And I've asked this question of, of you know the project people. 
And <clears throat> I don't really want to speak for them, but basically, I mean, you have to tell the truth. You can't issue anymore, you know? So that would put a squeeze on the price if there was demand, obviously. So I don't want to get too complicated. It might be a good idea to do an interview with them. But no, I've been convinced from the beginning that, um, you know, they're on the up and up, but things change in a startup. I mean, like 99% of yeah. startups fail. This one hasn't. It's struggled at times, I'll be honest. And there were a couple of times where I felt we were pretty close that, you know, my dream of putting, you know, silver back in the monetary system is not going to happen. And, you know, certainly not about me. It's about a philosophy about honesty throughout and integrity for all people rather than, you know, the banks running us, you know, my basics. So uh, it got close, but it's on board now. Everything's looking good. And uh, they changed the, the terms and conditions a couple of times, uh, but they're upfront about it. You know, hey, look, I can't do it for this much money. I need more money. Are you willing to stay on board with us or not? And there were people that were like myself and those that weren't. And that's, you know, free markets. Like, hey, I'm willing to risk this much. And you hit that limit and I'm out. So you hit my stop loss. So whatever. Hope I didn't over talk it, but I really like the concept and I'm partial because I invested in it, but I also believe in it more than ever. I really think that we've got one of the top precious metals backed cryptocurrencies that's out there in the, in the marketplace. Right. And I think what you're saying about, you know, changing the terms, making sure it's transparent and you know what's going on. That seems to be an increasing theme among silver investors this year is making sure to read that fine print on some of the products that are out there and understanding exactly what they are. Yes, I mean, I uh, want to be a little careful how I say this, but, you know, sometimes there's a trust factor. There's a trust factor with me. I'm pretty widely trusted. And, uh, but no matter what, you're the one that's responsible. I sent a Twitter you know, I put this on my Twitter account just like last week, no matter who tells you, you know, this storage program is fine or that, you know, whatever is good or, you know, don't worry about that unallocated, read the contract. It's your responsibility. And if you read the contract, you will have the information. And if you're too lazy or capable, some people, the legal ease is tough at times. You know, and you're putting in substantial money, pay a lawyer, call up somebody that deals with contract law and say, what does it cost me? You know, it's going to, you know, it's eight, it's eight pages to read this and explain it to me. Because a lot of these contracts, um, really, when you read them, they're, they're scary. It's basically, well, we could take your money, even though you're buying into a precious metals pool account, we can do anything we want with the money. Well, that doesn't sound like a very substantial silver investment or gold investment. And yet it's right in the contract. So why would you do it if your intention is to have someone store, you know, silver or gold for you? Right. And okay, so, you know, we spoke last a couple of months ago when we were right in the middle of all the silver squeeze activity. Definitely, it seems to me like people are still interested in the market. They're still buying silver. In From your perspective, how is that movement going, that, that silver squeeze effort that we saw start earlier this year? Well, like any idea or new business or you know, anything that people start, it, it has a, and I don't know, there's probably somebody that has a name for it. I don't know what it is, but you get kind of this enthusiastic run. So it goes from zero and it goes kind of straight up. There's lots of people that adapt to it early. Then it starts to kind of not be as exciting and kind of falls back and it kind of plateaus for a while. And that's where we are right now. But the, the main amount of momentum is largely still there. So just using round numbers, and I'm guessing, but the idea is clear. We went to zero to 100% the first month, month and a half, and now it's maybe down to 80, 85%. But that percentage that dropped off to 10 or 15%, they were in it for various reasons. But the real convicted people is still very high. I'm guessing like 80%, which surprised me in a way, because I know from you know talking to some of the people at Wall Street Silver, doing interviews with them, reading the Reddit forums and everything else. A lot of people are millennials, which is fine with me. I've got two daughters that are. But 
they're being they're they're diving deeper than I expected. They're not surface people. These people are seriously interested in how the monetary system works. Why silver probably makes is one of the key points to a the vulnerability of the big lie and that it is a legacy investment that over time will probably prove to be one of the smartest moves you can make. Doesn't mean that you put everything you have in silver. It would be basically I've always taught it's a hedge. It's a hedge against uncertainty and huge amount of risk people are taking, believing everything is as it's stated. You know, stocks are all time high. The Nasdaq's getting a new high. Don't worry about the bond market. It's been the best market in 40 years. Uh, you know, you're diversified if you own a bunch of different stocks. I mean, all these things that, in my view, are not factual that people are taught and they, a lot of them go along with the normalcy bias that, oh, yeah, I'm fine. My financial planner knows exactly what they're doing and don't have and have extreme amount of risk. Don't have that risk covered by what you do with your house, fire insurance or flood insurance or hurricane insurance. You need that because it happens. And that's all you need in your financial portfolio. You need financial insurance. And there's no other insurance, even crypto, that works as good as physical gold and silver. All right. And in your view, where does silver go for the rest of the year? Not necessarily a price prediction, but what's the market going to be looking like, do you think, as we head into 2021? Yeah, well, I will say price, and I may be wrong. You know, certainly I'm not afraid to be wrong. I love to be right, you know, 98% of the time. I said before the Wall Street Reddit crowd came on board, so that was like in February or early, late mm -hmm. January 2020, I saw silver could hit 40. That doesn't mean it gets to 40 and stays there. You know, it could go from 38 to 40 on a big up day and then get smashed down or whatever. I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm just saying we could see a 40 print. It might be one day, could go longer. Uh, I won't take that back and put it in print. So how could I take it back? As far as where we are right now, it's a little discouraging. I mean, we're seeing silver mm -hmm. bounce around the uh, trading range somewhere from, uh, it's been as low as 24, but not last long. It's been in a range somewhere between 25 and 27. And until silver gets above the like 27, 50, maybe 28 level and stays there on volume, then we're stuck. We're stuck in this trading range. Will this trading range go to the end of the year? We're only in mid-April. I'd say no. I think summers are usually dull for the metals, but that's hard to predict. Some of the best uh, markets we've had over the last decade have been during the summer. So there's that. Uh, I think higher. I think substantially higher. I think that mm -hmm. silver could do another 30%. So if you look at where at the end of the year, I forget the number now, um 20 something i think you know at 30 percent at six bucks you know that's pushing over 30 for sure 33 34 i think that's reasonable the thing about silver is once it gets through these key levels like this 27 and a half 28 there's not much holding it back to like 33 or 4 <clears throat> and that's very minimal pressure not counting what the banks can do with the synthetic markets but the synthetic markets are now being questioned. So a lot to look forward to, in my view, Charlotte. I mean, no one's got a crystal ball, but I've looked at this market hard and deep for a long time. And I'm far more bullish this year than I have been in a while. Perfect. And any final words you would leave the audience with? Uh, perhaps let us know where we can find you in this, in this market where knowledge is more important than ever. Thank you. Yeah, the morganreport.com, get on our free newsletter. I do weekly podcasts and give you information, interview, any interviews like this we put out there. If you're really interested in the market, just go to the morganreport.com, pull down the books menu and ch you know check out the Silver Manifesto and Second Chance, how to make and keep big money during the coming gold and silver shockwave, because that's what we're going to be experiencing. And if you think you're too late at $25 silver, remember on an inflation adjusted basis, we're still extremely low. And that 90% of the move comes in the last 10% of the time. That's normally what happens in any market. Is it 90%? No. Is it 10%? No. But the general idea is that the last leg of any bull market is the most powerful in price appreciation and usually doesn't last that long. Could I build a case that we've got a you know, bull market for the next 10 years in silver? Yes, I can make that case. But as I've often said, the market knows more than anybody. The past is no guarantee for the future. 
But in the past, for the real estate market, the stock market, the Japanese stock market, the bond market, and you look at most of these markets, they do have a big surge on that third leg or final phase that goes quite strong and usually isn't that long a duration. So I'll leave it there. Okay, sounds like a great note to end on. Thank you so much for being here once again to talk about silver. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you, Charlotte. Once again, I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and this is David Morgan with the Morgan Report.